We are quickly approaching the Steam Deck's two-year anniversary. It's crazy to think that we've had the Steam Deck for two years. It, the scene has changed so much since the original release of the Steam Deck. At, in the beginning, it was just the Steam Deck and the Nintendo Switch that people were comparing against. Now we have the Ally, the Legion Go, the more popular Neo devices, even Ambernic has made their attempt though horrible, attempt at the very least, in the portable, you know, gaming PC market. And my major concern is, does the Steam Deck still hold up as well as the, its competitors here now in 2024? Is it still worth it to buy a Steam Deck and will you be still getting a quality gaming experience two years later? And we're still at minimum a year away from any new hardware coming from Valve to replace the Steam Deck. But that doesn't mean we haven't seen any new interesting stuff coming from Valve. We got a revision of the Steam Deck in October of this year, of the new OLED model Steam Decks. The announcement and then the future release in that November for those new models. And they have been a spectacular upgrade overall for the Steam Deck line. It genuinely revamps the whole line. Prices are going down for those devices and overall just added so much more value to the hardware. While it may not be Steam Deck 2, it definitely was a upgrade for some people, or even the, a perfect opportunity to finally get a Steam Deck. I've been testing the Steam Decks with some of the latest games that have been coming out, some big titles. Pal World runs phenomenally. It's been one of the primary ways I play Pal World. It is such a fun game and it runs great on the Steam Deck. It's not a 100% like 60 FPS the whole time, but I tend to average around between 30 to 50 FPS depending on like what's happening and how complex the base I have and the kind of pals I have lying around. But never has it ever been stuttery or framey. It's just been a relatively consistent experience. And I think that's what really, it might be the major downside of the Steam Deck is that as the time progresses, it does show its age, relatively in speaking, with its hardware. With the new OLED model Steam Deck, we did get a refined model of the Steam Deck's uh, SoC, going from a 6 nanometer to a 5 nanometer chip, increasing its efficiency and increasing battery life across the board, but that doesn't necessarily increase any performance, unfortunately. Maybe we saw a percent difference, but Nothing notable to actually take into consideration when making a purchasing decision. One thing that I had wish gotten better with the Steam Deck over these last two years is availability. It is still a struggle to get your hands on a Steam Deck if you live in places like Australia or other, you know, less uh, connected parts of the world. Many of my audience members struggle getting a Steam Deck because they live places that aren't necessarily have these available or Valve doesn't ship to. So you have to have to go through third party resellers or try your luck on, you know, used markets. But even still, the prices are horrendous there. For at least those of us who live in the United States and Canada and stuff, it is actually fairly easy to get your hands on though. Shipping times are now down, down about a week, I think, is the last time I checked about people getting their house soon they get their Steam Decks. It's amazing. While the Steam Deck might not have the most performance nowadays, I think it's still plenty usable to play most of your, you know, upcoming titles at 720p, you know, low medium settings depending on the game, and you'd be able to have a quality enough experience, especially considering that this is a mobile device. I even recently went on a road trip with my family to go visit for the holidays, and I played Elden Ring on the go. It's crazy to have that capability, and I'm not saying Elden Ring is a relatively new game, being at this point now a couple years old, I believe. So it's not necessarily going to really tax the hardware, but it's still definitely a demanding game, and it runs phenomenally. A game that feels quite at home on the Steam Deck is Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. This game came out relatively recently, and it runs great on the Steam Deck. It's a really, you know, awesome game to play on the go. It's the kind of game that you sort of get through a level and you put down and then you pick it up right back up again later. It's super easy to jump in and out of and it has a perfect place on the Steam Deck. One of the other games I really like to play 
on the Steam Deck is Persona 3 Reloaded. This came out recently and I loved playing Persona 4 Golden on my Vita and being able to play Persona 3 Reloaded on the go with my Steam Deck, it's amazing. Being able to play these brand new AAA games, granted these aren't the most demanding games, there's still beautiful games to play and being able to take them on the go with you, add and play them whenever you want, it's amazing. These kinds of games don't necessarily always come out on Nintendo Switch, but when they do, it's usually a compromised experience. I wouldn't say it's a horrible experience, because even Borderlands 3 made it to the Switch, and it's pretty good. But the Steam Deck is just elevating that experience. The larger screen, the bigger sticks, it just feels good still. Even a year on, the analog sticks, the triggers, the face buttons, all feel still so good, so fresh. I, and I can't necessarily say the same of my Joy-Cons because those things died after the first two years. And for those of us who upgraded to the OLED model when that came out, we are treated to one of the best screens on the market. That beautiful HDR display with such vibrant and rich colors is just a treat to behold. One of the things that keeps me coming back to my Steam Deck is emulation. Having this beast of a device be able to crunch away at emulation is awesome especially if, for those of us who have the OLED model like I mentioned before that beautiful display playing these games with such a high quality image is just stupendous which is a fun word to say and just generally has been one of the best experience I've had and it's only getting better I use Windows on my Steam Deck so it's a little bit more complicated than it would be on SteamOS but recently the people behind EmuDeck released a beta for the Windows um, side of things. So being able to download EmuDeck and have it set up and download all your emulators for you is gotten so much better and easier. It's one of the best ways to get started with emulation on your Steam Deck, especially if you're on SteamOS and now if you use Windows on your deck, it's finally so much easier thanks to this software. 2024 has a lot of anticipation for the gaming handheld scene. We're seeing rapid development among all these handheld companies and new forays into these kind of handhelds. Every other month we're getting announcements and even Sony is going to make an attempt at it again with recent leaks and news coming out of Sony about a new PS Vita coming out. And my hope of this industry is just ever expanding because it is just thriving and it all started thanks to the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck should hold up very well in 2024 with the prices of it, the devices getting cheaper and sales happening far, fairly regularly and we, even with the recent price drop of the old 64 gig and the old 512 gig models it has gotten even easier to get into the Steam Deck market. You can get the original 64 gigabyte model LCD model of the Steam Deck for 350 bucks or 280 dollars refurbished getting this device for less than 300 dollars less at the price of a nintendo switch is insane those bear in mind are fairly hard to get your hands on because they constantly sell out whenever they do have any so you're more likely to be able to get one of the 350 dollar models for the 64 gigabyte and it's super easy to upgrade your storage you don't even have to just use the micro sd card you can pop the back off and with one screw flop out the emmc ssd which is basically a soldered micro sd card and replace it with a proper 2230 ssd that's what i did and i swapped my 64 gig bottle out for 256 gigabytes which i feel like is a good middle ground I didn't need a lot of storage because I have a one terabyte micro SD card. I just wanted something a little bit faster to for when I switched to Windows. To sort of conclude this video and summarize it, yes, the Steam Deck I think is still worth it in 2024. It offers a tremendous amount of value for its price point and it will continue to do so until something truly competitive at this price point comes out. And I can tell you this, it's not the INEO Next Lite. I have already made it clear how much I dislike that device and I just hope something comes out eventually to really compete with the Steam Deck. So what are your thoughts? Are you interested in getting a Steam Deck? Are you going to get one after this, watching this video? Which model are you going to get? The OLED or the LCD? I'd love to hear your thoughts, comments, and concerns down below. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. All of that other social media garbage down below. And last but not least, have a wonderful day.